Welcome, 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 welcome. You and I tuned in with Eyes on Podium Podcast. And I'm here with my bros to the right of me. Who to the right? Who to the right? Who to the right? Chris, Coach Chris, and Showtime Tone. We are here. Um, Before we get into the episode, this is episode 35. Um, Like, comment, subscribe. We need y'all to do that. Continue supporting the pod. We are growing. It's dope. Um, so yeah, do we want to say anything to the people before we get we gear off? Nah. Oh yes, I have an, a very very important <laughs> announcement. I'm so, I don't know, even know how to slip my mind. Yeah, Henny has um been dismissed. Oh, he violated um some rules mm-hmm. that here at Eyes on Podium Podcast we just. We can't accept no, it. Can't can't accept it. You can't accept it. He's he's been dismissed. He won't be joining us again. Nah. He's um, gone. It's yeah. over for him. And he won't he won't he won't be missed. He won't be missed. That's all. I just had to <laughs> let that be known. Perfect. You could drop you could drop you could drop my intro music. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Or... I don't need no comments. I don't care what they say. In time, place, we can talk about it. Last night I was wildin'. Made 2K over 2K. It's a new day and I'm back to problem. Bank account be crowded. By next June, need five rooms. Soundproof. Watch them doubt it. Hey, they try to talk me out of here. I done wasted some greatness just sitting there trying to think about it. I go try my ring and give all of my homies rollies. MVP race. Who wins it, baby? Who wins it? Hey, you know, you mm-hmm. listen, listen. They say it was going to be unanimous the way they was acting all year. They acting like it's a, 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 a 50 game award. You know what I mean? Like it's 82 games in a season, homie. It's valid. You know what I'm saying? From end to end. As Chris sips his water. As Chris sips his water. <clears throat> Yo, yo, Tone, Tone, no, he thirsty. We're not going to him. We're not going to him yet. He thirsty. Yo, Tone, you go first, Tone. Tone, you go first. Who you feel yeah, like I gotta say, it? I gotta say, this year's uh, MVP race is exciting. I think it's gonna go down to the last few games, mm. right? Mm-hmm. But I want to recognize before I go any further, though. Right. A common trend I'm noticing in the NBA: the three front runners are all international players. Giannis, Joker, and Bead. Joker's won the MVP the last two years. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, we had Giannis. So it seems like the international game is is catching up as far as their top tier talent. They don't, um, they, don't, they don't really count Embiid as an international player, but I, I understand what you're saying. They say even though he was born, he wasn't born in the United States. He came here and learned the basketball game here. He didn't learn the basketball game in in in, in the Euro leagues or whatever it gives to be. But I I I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. That's what they said. That's the that's the that's the that's the, that's the word on on Embiid. As the as the word on the streets. Yeah, um, the streets on Embiid. Listen, the guy I got coming away with MVP in the next few weeks, uh huh, is gonna be Joker. Gotta go with, gotta gotta go with Joker the Don. Joker the um, Don. I, I can't give him the Don. We gotta keep that for my guys out. In, in Leon. Line. But yeah, Joker, Joker, Joker's gonna come away with MVP. I think he's probably gonna close the season averaging a triple double. Team is number one in the West. Mm. Um, you know his play impacts winning. Doesn't have any other. Superstars on his team, just is on a team with a got a roster full of you know good players. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I gotta go with Joker this year. All right, you gotta but go with Joker. Tight. You gotta go with Joker. Tight. You gotta go with Joker. I'm I'm gonna I'm assume that that Coach Chris is going the Joker route too, because he says he's you know what I mean. Go go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Absolutely not. Um, Absolutely I'm not. Going... <laughs> I'm going with. Joel and Bead. 
Wow. Joel Embiid is leading the NBA in scoring right now. They are, um, I believe, eight and one in their last nine games. He's also, um, his win percentage right now is also better than Joker's right now in the season. I know Joker's in the West and he's in the East, but as of right now, uh-huh. the uh, Philadelphia 76ers have a better record than the Denver Nuggets. Not, not they, do. they do. They do. Oh, they, they do. do. Yeah. They do. I they guess. Boom, boom, boom. I know you ain't know that. I knew you ain't know that. You, the funny thing about it is that, I mean, y'all, y'all don't know this, but we was, we was talking off camera and we was we, we we don't really we don't give our opinions until the pod like we don't we really don't give our opinions to each other until the pod. So the crazy thing about it is that Chris thought I was going going Joker, but I'm going in bead. I'm going in bead. I'm going in bead. Really? I'm going in bead. I'm going in bead. I'm going in bead. I'm going in bead because he's in the tough tough East. And he got the same record. He got the same Fun. record. Um, record. he got what? He got a record. better record. Whatever. Um, not, I think. Much, but... I think. Better. I think. I think Embiid. I think Joker is probably the better all around offensive player in the sense of he's a more of a he's an engine like Steph Curry's an engine. Um, he makes the entire team go. Um. But we're splitting hairs here. I mean, they're both amazing players. They're probably the, like you said, there's you put Giannis in there. Giannis is the number. His team is number one right now. They're the best team in the league. And we have Joker and Embiid. Um. Wow, I just convinced myself to pick Giannis. As I was talking, <laughs> I just did that. I just talked myself into Giannis. How does Giannis look? Best team in the in the play, in the in the whole league. Hey, so well, what we gotta realize is, like you said, oh, the eighty two games. It's an eighty two game season, brother. He already got fifty wins. That, that one, okay, that one to three. Do you see how close that is? Thirty one. Yeah. He's averaging thirty one, twelve and five. I'm to- right. Nice. I'm talking about the one seed to the three seed. You 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 basically were convinced because you saw Giannis had the best record in it. That's yes. what took you over as, the top. With yes, that. yes. As I was looking, because I Embiid has been playing crazy, um, but it, it it's crazy because no matter how hard Embiid plays, he's just not catching Giannis, like in in the standings. Uh, no, that's not necessarily true. You think what he standings? Catch- the MV, the MVP standings or? No, so, so so what's happening no, I'm right talking now? About team was, team standings like the Bucks and the and the Sixers. I don't feel like they, game, aren't they like three games behind? They are, but they're not catching. They what do you mean? The bad week. Sixers just won like eight straight. They lost. Yeah, last it's game. the bad week. Yeah, they they lost their last game in double overtime. Yeah, they still lost. <laughs> and, and and the highest streak win the highest streak total. Of any team goes to the the Bucks, it had like nineteen straight wins. We're not talking this about year? that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see how we're not talking about that though. <laughs> In February, like That's January to February, they had like a crazy stretch. I'm I'm pulling up right now. Bucks, yeah. Streak. Was it like nineteen? Yeah, I think I think it was eighteen. 18? Another another interesting stat is Giannis plays the least minutes of all three of them. 16 consecutive games before losing to Philly on March 4th. Who they lost to? Philly. They lost to Philly. Oh, Philly. Who's on Philly? Some other players. <laughs> but I don't think Giannis played that game because he, he, I think he was out. But I don't know. It's either here or there. But, I mean, Let up. listen. Uh, you got Jokic. I mean, we all split, really, honestly. I, I was. When did I they came lose? Into, when did they lose? When March did they lose? I came into this conversation gonna pick Embiid because of I really feel like the media is just making me want to feel like it's Embiid, but Giannis is really the head honcho right now. It's like we're not gonna give it to Giannis because he he had he won it twice already, and everybody just wanted a reason not to give it to Jokic because he won it twice already back to back. True, but. but they want to give it to Embiid because Embiid 
should have got it last year. Nah, I think by, here's Giannis the thing. I think by, Giannis played, by the way. He did. How much? Yeah. He, <clears throat> he had thirty four. Um, he had thirty four and thirteen. It's tough. Let me be here. <laughs> uh, he had thirty one. Thirty one and ten and six. It's tough. It's a great basketball being played. Go ahead, Tony. You was about to say something. Nah, I think I think the NBA may have to go to a most valuable player, an offensive player, and a defensive player like the NFL. Yeah. I think yeah. I think Embiid's having the best offensive campaign this year. Yeah. I don't think he's the most valuable player. Mm. I think there's a difference. Mm. I think there's a difference. I because I would I would then move him out of the conversation and then it would be between Giannis and Joker. Uh huh. And then I would still I would pivot to Joker again because I think he's the most valuable player to his team. Even though Giannis has carried that team without Chris Middleton all year, but Giannis also did miss some time. Right. So but Holiday was carrying him. Right. That's, that's, no, that's true. That's, that's true. That's true. So that that would be a reason that I would give it to Joker as the MVP. But I mean. What Embiid's been doing offensively is, is, you know, not something to just toot your nose up at. So they got they got MB they got Jokic um Jokic um I think he's number one on the no yeah oh no and B passes and B passes him a couple of days ago yes I know that he's number one wow that's tough nah, B had a good week so it is. That's really what it is, yo, because because yeah. they they went on like a little skid, they lost yeah, a couple yeah, bunch of games, skid. and then it was like, yep. oh my gosh! But like I was saying earlier, it's an eighty-two game season. It's, he put himself in a position that he's literally they got a, such a cushion in the West, um, that he's good. But they're not like playing a, for the same thing. Him and Embiid not playing for the same thing. Embiid's playing to try to get the number one seed. No, Embiid's playing to get the MVP. Jokic. Both. Both. I don't think he's trying to get the number one seed. Jokic is already averaging a triple double and he's the number one seed in the West. Bro, they I cool. mean, off rip, Jokic, I mean, I'm, he's averaging a triple double as a center. It's disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's tough. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's that's insane. That's so tough. That's 25, 12, and 10? That's, that's kind of ridiculous. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's impressive. Um, what stood out to me most, um, HB, what I thought you were gonna go with. What? <laughs> Cause I, I I went to go look at Joel and Beads plus minus. Mm-hmm. It's Joel and Beads plus minus is plus three eighty five. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh snap. Joker's couldn't be better than that. <laughs> What's this plus minus? Plus six oh eight. Oh my god. Gosh, that's what I'm saying. He impacts the entire game. Like he, he's the, he's really the engine of the of their offense, right? Like he accounts for a lot of a lot of movement, a lot of points. Uh, he he he. He's like Listen, the king, ten, ten the assists, king of hockey assists. Ten ten assists on average is twenty additional points that he generates. That's just on twos. That's not saying any threes. So, but he's gener- but I would say. Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead, finish. It. I got he's something. generating more of the team's offense. Just and he's the center. He's not even supposed to be initiating the. You know, that's why they have a point guard. But you know, you can account to at least have forty points just because he's on the floor. Right. So my 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 thing to go back. Right, Dorm. You was HB. You were saying that he is the engine. Right. He is. So, but he's required to be that for that team. Right. Mm-hmm. As for Philly, you have a facilitator in James Harden who leads the league in assists. So Embiid is not put in a position where he has to do that. Mm-hmm. Joker has to do that for Denver to be successful. Joel Embiid is not in a position where he has to do that. Right. So it's also roster construction. Right. At the same time. Like do you that's think what Joker, Joker can... is required to do? You think Embiid can do what Joker does? I'm not saying that. So then, the the no. then that statement isn't valid. 
Do you but think he but, can do but it? At the same, but at the same time, we're talking about a can if. That's an if. I, I'm asking if. you, what do you think? If we're going to do ifs, I'm asking you, what do you think? You think he can do it? I think it's possible. No, you don't. I think it's I possible. Don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't think, think you, you don't think MB can get 10 assists. <laughs> you do not think that. I don't think you think that. Not, not 10 assists. Yeah, it, it was a, it was another. Probably... He's yeah, averaging was... he's averaging four assists with somebody that's averaging eleven. Okay, do you think he can average ten assists? Joker's not averaging ten assists. <laughs> <laughs> he said Joker not averaging. He averaging nine point nine. <laughs> nine point nine eight seven six. Oh man, that's funny. Ten. Nah, I mean, yeah, it's, nah, it's I a don't, fair, I don't think, I don't think, I, I don't think, I don't think it be could do it, but I get your point. Joker, it's a fair assessment. Just, yeah, yeah, it's just he's in a position where he got to do that for them to be successful. Joker's, I mean, Embiid's not in a position where he has to do that. I think if you put Joker on any team, he does, he can do that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah I, agree. I agree. I mean, but the I man agree. is the man. Joel is leading the league in points. I mean, that's tough in itself as a for a center. For a center, yeah. I agree. Right. I, I averaging was, thirty, averaging close to thirty four a game. Yeah. I yeah, was, I mean, listen, listen, he's on a tear, which is why I went back to, if there was an offensive player award, I don't think we would even be having this conversation, and we would give him the offensive player. But when we talk about the most valuable player, who's impacting winning in different categories the most, it ha- like he, you know, and B's. Great on the defensive end, so you know we got to give him his credit there, right? So, but That's true, he's two way player. Good yeah, he's a, player. he's a he's a two way player, but we're talking about just overall value that a player brings to your team. When we mention the season, the regular season MVP, it's got to be it's got to be Joker or Giannis. Just off of that, and Giannis is he was hurt, so he missed games. Mm. All right. Listen, I seen, we'll see. A, I seen a I seen a crazy performance uh last night. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Julius Randle goes for 57 points. Some people oh, loved indeed. it. Some people didn't. I mean, the man won us the game, was winning us the game, and then all of a sudden felt like he lost us the, lost game. Us the game. That yep. and that that did happen. That did happen. Mm-hmm. Um so let's 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 talk about it. Let's talk about it. So, so here's the thing. So he, so yeah, like you said, Julius Randle carried the Knicks for the first three quarters. Mm -hmm. Carried them. Mm -hmm. The problem was the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And it was a combination of two things. Julius Randle was gassed. Yep. And he also, it was also his decision making. Mm-hmm. There was a play where I almost just turned the TV off. The shot clock was running down, and I'm sure you've seen it. He got the ball at the top of the key, pump faked. He had the whole lane to the rim, could have had a layup. He stepped back, takes a air, makes a shoot to air ball three. Holy! He had the whole lane. Yeah, it's like, bro, you know you're tired. You know your body. Go attack the rim. Why would you settle for a step back three? No and legs. the game is so close with no legs. Yeah, no legs. You you gotta you gotta know yourself. You gotta self regulate at that point in the game, and try to get an easier shot than making it a lot more tougher than, than you already mm-hmm. did. You're already at fifty points. You already laid it all out. Everybody can tell you're gas. Yeah. Why take those difficult shots that take even more out of you? They're hard. You take those kind of shots when you got fresh legs and you taking heat checks. Yeah. You are at a point where we could see that you're tired. You know, and it was just the, the decision making down the stretch. He had a crucial turnover at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. He just he just has to be better with the decision making. You know, he has to learn how to impact the game without having to just try to do it all. Like it's it, it's frustrating too because he he lost the game. He won us the he he was winning winning us the game, and then he he lost the game for us in in a variety of ways. That shot did contribute, but what really irritated me was the technical foul. And oh god, I forgot about that. How he let Prince just lay the ball up. He just let him lay the ball up. 
it was, he was the la- he was he was there. He just watched him. And then got upset that he scored. Yeah. You 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 don't get out on sh- on shooters ever. Right? He don't close out. Like his closeouts are terrible. He lets people just he don't box out sometimes. I'm so surprised that he's like top 10 in rebounds. I don't that said I, a lot about that said a lot about Terry on Prince going um having a career night. He had a Three. career night. He didn't miss. Eight for eight. He didn't miss. He didn't miss. I think I think we gotta we gotta start putting a little bit of respect around Julius Randle. It's always something that he could have done better, or his impact didn't result to anything that positive that we want to talk about. You know, Julius Randle hasn't missed a game this year. Yeah. He's averaging twenty. He's averaging twenty five and ten. The Knicks are fifth seed in the East, sixth mm-hmm. seed mm-hmm. in the Eastern Conference, toughest conference in the league this year. He is the MVP of the Knicks this year. Point blank, he hasn't missed a game. He had one of the biggest performance in Knicks history yesterday. They come up short, sure, but his impact this year cannot be dismissed. 25, 10, he's played every game this season. You know, they lost. It, it, it is what it is. I, I feel like we, we have a specific conversation around him just because of his history and because of the whole let's trade Julius thing. But we can have this same conversation for a lot of other superstars around the league. And I did say superstars. I think he's arrived I think he's 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 in that uh in that space now. We can consider him to be a superstar in the Eastern Conference. Wow. Superstar? I have to agree. Did he lose us the game last night? <laughs> to me, uh, yes, I do. However, <laughs> when we step back and look at everything, I do feel like that player that we're looking for, that 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 next player, we have him already. We have yep. Jalen Brunson. We have two All NBA players. I, I truly believe that um, Jalen Brunson was snubbed, right, from All Star, and he's going to get rewarded by being probably third NBA All NBA. Um, and we have a we have a good coach, right? We have a solid coach that changed the the culture. So I mean. Yes, we possibly do have our superstars. However, how far away are we? Right. So that's always the question, I right? I think it's it, right. It's a combination of that, especially going into the playoffs. These are little things like that we talk about that just need to be cleaned up before the playoffs start. Right. Right. We can't have they can't have those mishaps going into the playoffs. Like we have to be able to make better decisions down the stretch, especially when it's crucial. It's playoff time. Right. There's no going back. Like there's no makeups. This season, yeah. You win games, you lose games. Right. right. You could you could fix it, go on a little streak, but nah, playoffs done for. So there's no there's no room for error when it's playoff time. So if Julius Randle's gonna be hot like that down the stretch, he's gonna have to know how to finish games. He's gonna have to. But he's absolutely been a sensational. Like nobody He's been he's been amazing. Been sensational. Sensational. But it was just scary last night looking at him at that kind of performance. Right. And then crumble down the stretch like that. Yeah. He got like the, that the, just made that made his 57 point night feel like a 25 point night. Yeah. Yeah. Which like, he did. Which, that's, which he did. That's, that, that's how I made it feel. Is do does does Tips get a little blame for that though? Of not of of probably MJ's not letting him. Minute? Yeah, man, like not let him rest long enough. Because at the same time, we're trying to come back, right? Like we're trying to the Knicks are trying to come back from Prince not missing a shot from them shooting ninety percent in the first quarter. Like insane. Every time they came down the court, they they scored. Every time. And you know and you know Tibbs is gonna roll with the high hand. He gonna roll with the high hand, yeah. He gonna he gonna run his players into the ground. Right. Oh yeah, he has a history of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Much he, more documented. He, I'll say this. I <laughs> I think the Knicks are in a good position as far as how they can close out the season. Um, if the season ended today, they had the Cavs. I feel good about that. I feel great about that because of the bench, really. I feel like the yeah. Knicks bench is just so much better than the Cavs. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and, I, 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 and they have better perimeter defenders. I mean, you didn't see it last night, but they do. Yeah, that's what I it's gonna. That come, that's literally what it's gonna come down to with Cleveland. It's gonna be the bench play. It is. I think it's so. gonna be the bench play. Quickly, quickly, quickly is is is, is screaming for that six man in the year award. I think, and I think he'll get it. I think he will get it. Do they do they give out awards after the first round of the playoffs? I'm just trying to remember. I think it's I like think it's during, it's during, I think it's during the first round. It's during the first round? Okay. Cause I'm gonna tell you, quickly in the first round against Donovan Mitchell and he's getting cooked all night. Nah. They say they say that they don't judge them, but listen, you 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 judge what you see. If he's getting cooked, it's like uh, maybe we give it to this guy. Nah. I don't. I don't really know any players that are like who really can compete with quickly for that award. Besides Brogdon, I, I, maybe I'm maybe I'm not um, sleeping yet. And I I saw a stat the other day with the comparison of Brogdon and I was playing Brogdon for the year. Yeah, he's been out playing Brogdon. Oh yeah, I, I didn't even know Brogdon was really being considered. Yeah, Brogdon. <laughs> <laughs> <He's damn dirty. laughs> yeah. Quickly, quick the the quickly um. Uh, third year leap happened, and it's like, oh wow, wow, that did happen. Like we, we couldn't even notice how he just got so much better. Like this, yeah, we, it's, we, it's not even—it's not even a question. Quickly is is has more points than Brogdon, more rebounds than Brogdon, more assists than Brogdon, more steals than Brogdon, less turnovers yeah. than Brogdon, and more three pointers made than Brogdon. Yeah. Probably played more games too. <laughs> yeah, it's probably like a, it's probably a runaway award, honestly. Uh, right, that's what I'm saying. I think I think it's not even gonna be close for this award. I think I feel like he's gonna be like not even gonna be close. Yeah, yeah. I, not I, even gonna be. Close. We thought it would have been RJ that would have made this leap by now. No, you thought. That. <laughs> Is it safe to say it's too late? Uh I mean, you know what Henny says: the man who got fired. He gets better as the season goes on. There's still not, more let's games. Not, uh, let's not talk. <laughs> and that's exactly why he's fired. <laughs> <laughs> With those takes. <laughs> oh, man. Can't wait till the next episode. He that's might hilarious. He might reinstate him just to talk about it. Nah. <laughs> Depends how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I want to talk about how the Warriors finally won a road game. It's been like since January. And yeah, I mean, I picked them to three peat. I, I mean, I I I I thought it would three peat. I know it's difficult to do, but I feel like Stephen Curry's gonna edge himself to be a top five player soon. And I feel like he needs those two rings to do that. Uh right now he has four. I think he would end with six. Um, I do. But without Wiggins right now, um, they look bad defensively. And it looks like they're not even trying. But they are. That's the sad part, right? One one positive sighting is Klay Thompson looks back. He looks like Klay oh, yeah, Thompson. He's, huh? Absolutely. He's, he's taking the ball off the – he's taking – he's going to the rim – He's playing good defense. He's doing he his legs look like it's under him. We just need to get Wiggins back. Um, I know he's going through whatever he's going through. We don't know what it is. Um, but everybody in the Warriors organization seems to really respect it. I'm not I'm not even gonna speculate what it is. I've seen a whole bunch of crazy stuff online because I was just trying to figure it out. But <laughs> I couldn't. But um but yeah, man. Finally won a role game. Why do y'all think they haven't been winning role games this year? Um, I think at his core, they're not the greatest defensive team, especially without Andrew Wiggins. Mm-hmm. They don't really have guys who can guard the premier positions in the league, so perimeter defenders. Right. Which is why they brought in Gary Payton Jr. Um, we don't know Clay if he's coming back. It. I'm hearing that he is supposed to be available for the uh, playoffs, but... Mm. Again, that's all speculation. But they're not the greatest defensive team, right? Right. They don't have guys who you can put in front of those premier perimeter offensive players and say, hey, go stop that guy. 
Right. So, you know, those players are having a field day with, with Golden State. And then I think the whole situation with Draymond in the beginning of the season, right? It, you know, people may undervalue what it really was and what it meant to the locker room, but I think it's hard for him to yell at people and demand that type of respect. He's, after not, give, what, he's like, not giving the respect. Right. Like, people don't respect him the same way. Um, he kind of broke that in the beginning of the season. So I think that has something to do with it, too. But what I will say is Golden State gets Andrew Wiggins and Gary Payton back. The sky's the limit. I could easily see them 3P. Um, 3P. I could see them repeating. Because they'll have their perimeter defender. They'll have an extra one in Gary Payton. You know, Clay Thompson could fill the gaps there. And, you know, we got to give Jonathan Kaminga some, you know, some shout out, too. He He's improved this year. I don't That's think he's re- ready to be the primary guy. Mm-hmm. But if he's the second or third person, he... That's a great option to have on the defensive end. Um, they're six right now. They're thirty-seven and thirty-six. If the if the uh, playoffs was to start today, they'll be playing the Kings. I think the Kings will smoke them today. Like if with the current team that they have, let's just say the playoffs was to start today, the Kings will probably smoke them. That's, that's with scary. oh you're saying that's with what Golden State has right now. Right now. Right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. It's it's it also looks like a lack of focus. It, it still looks like, you know, with all of this Dylan Brooks and Draymond Green and right. every time they play the Grizzlies, they get it's getting played out. It's getting played played out throwing up the four rings right now. Like let's talk about what's happening right now. Is it getting played out the four rings? I mean, we're not, we not, we not whole. Four rings will never get played out, right? Yeah. Obviously, that's they got to be your response. So you're right. So it'll, it'll never get played out, but it's just to a point where they got to hold themselves accountable. Like you know what I'm saying? Steph and Clay and Dre, you guys are the core, right? You know what I'm saying? You should be able to hold something down. Like they're looking, they're looking bad. Like they're putting up numbers, but they're consistent with losing. Yeah. Right. It's just a lack of focus. Like Draymond going back and forth with Dylan Brooks. He hasn't I don't I don't think he's been playing his best either. Like getting suspended. Now you're putting yourself in a position where you could possibly suspend it for playoff games. Like I just feel like you, you gotta if Wiggins don't come back, then you gotta scratch that. You gotta next man up. Y'all gotta figure out how to focus. Like like um Tone was saying. You right. know, Kaminga's going to be the next one up. You, y'all got to prepare him. He has to be prepared to be able to be put in that position in the playoffs. Like, it's going to be tough. It's going to be – it's not easy. And they already know what the road is. Mm-hmm. But if they don't get it together and focus, play like the team they are. I feel like when I watch Golden State play, I could tell when they locked in. You could see when Golden State locked in. They don't look yeah. locked in. They don't look locked in. They don't look like they They look like they're the all – they, they, they look like they're all trying to find their rhythm. They don't like, look like they're all they... finding their rhythm separately, though, not as a unit. They're like yeah. individually trying to find their rhythm. Mm-hmm. Like Steph is trying to get his rhythm back coming from injury. Mm-hmm. Draymond's trying to find his rhythm to get back what he's doing. Clay's trying to find his rhythm back from coming back from his his knee injury. Like he's mm-hmm. finding himself. Steph's fine. But they, it looks like individuals. Like they don't look like a unit out there. Yeah. Like how we're accustomed to seeing. Right. That's the, and that's yeah. what I mean when I say them being locked in. I just it just don't feel the same as when you talk about the Warriors. So you, you know what too? Um what what we have to consider too, the playoffs is gonna be eight, nine man rotation. Right. So, you know, they're gonna be playing like thirty seven minutes a game playoffs. Well the the, the Warriors don't have a nine man rotation today. No, I'm saying when the playoffs starts. Oh yeah, they they're gonna have a very short rotation, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a I short rotation. Like no, no yeah. Wiggins, no ring. Yeah, no yeah. Wiggins. Yep, no yeah. Wiggins. No, no Wiggins, ring. no ring. They don't have. You got to think about this. You said Sacramento would be their first, um, the first team they would have to play in the playoffs. Yeah, they, they need have Wiggins. no answer for De'Aaron Fox. Zero. Awesome. Like none. And that's where Andrew Wiggins comes in. 
That's yeah. where having Gary Payton Jr. comes in. Yeah, for sure. Because those are the only guys who can at least contain him and slow him down. Right. If you're asking Clay to do it and, you know, ask Steph to do it, it's not really that it's not going to help you. So I think, you know, honestly, I think Wiggins will be back. And we got to remember, guys, when Wiggins is on the floor with them, they probably have the one of the best rosters in the NBA. Like that that starting lineup is nasty. That that starting lineup is crazy. Right. And, you know, to Chris's point with rhythm, Clay has held down the fort for a few weeks with Steph out. They've been losing on the roll, but their home record is amazing. Yeah. So Clay, Clay's been playing out of his mind. Um, someone that's concerning me a little bit is Jordan Poole. I think Jordan Poole's kind of been looking for his rhythm all year. I think Jordan Poole is just one dimensional and it's and it's becoming glaring. It's like he's an explosive scorer, but if you're not scoring the ball, how do you how do you impact, impact the game impact without the game. scoring? Yeah, if right. you're shoot, not shooting well, how do you impact the game? It's not just yeah. about your 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 field goal percentage, you know what I mean. Right. So I, I I think that's the issue with 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 Poole, in my opinion. He just doesn't impact the game in more ways than scoring. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. And and I feel like it's it's looking even worse right now because of the lack of defenders. Like yeah, because of the loss of Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, because of the uh of no Gary. They just brought him back, but no Gary Payton. So that's other guards. But he's picking up extra minutes that he can't account for defensively. Right. So it's it's a little more rough for him right now. Andrew Wiggins guarded every premier player when they won a championship last year. Yep. All of them. Yep. And contain them to the to and contain them. And contain them. Yeah. Contain them. We didn't even recognize Jason Tatum. Yeah, I don't. We didn't even recognize him. We were like, what happened? I just read that there's optimism they're going to uh, reevaluate Gary Payton this Thursday. They said there's optimism he's going to return this week. Before well, the season's over? All right, there's let's one. see. There's one. All right, let's see. Let let's 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 go to LA real quick, man. Let's let's talk about um your boy your boy your boy Reeves. They talking 50 million four years. They talking that million. bag. Is he worth the bag? I feel like he's a. I feel like he's a a building block for um. He's a big building block for for LA. They finally starting to get some players. They got D'Lo. We are gonna talk about D'Lo a little later. Uh, Austin Reeves, Beasley, AD, Vanderbilt. Obviously, yep. I, I didn't mention the King. They got a good future ahead of them if they keep it tight. They keep. Building this, building around this team. I heard stories about. I heard rumors about Draymond Green possibly coming to the Lakers this summer, um, and that would kind of be crazy. Him and AD and LeBron as a front court. Oh my gosh! I don't know. We thought we thought Russell Westbrook was gonna look good too, but Russell Westbrook is not a. It's not Russell West. Russell Westbrook is not Draymond. You, I agree. If, if Draymond, Draymond is not Draymond is not Draymond. Um, off the uh, Warriors. Yeah, that's what we disagree. Because what Draymond does is he impacts the game from from front to back. He impacts the game on offense. He impacts the game on defense. He allows Curry, in my opinion, without Draymond Green, Curry is not the greatest shooter of all time. He doesn't get. The, I don't. I don't think that he looks the same. He will look awesome, but he's not gonna look how Draymond Green gets him open. That duo of we always talk about the duo, the Splash Brothers, but the real duo is Draymond and Steph. That's the real duo. No, but, I agree with you. So you don't, so, you don't, you don't so, feel that way about Russell Westbrook? No. no. Tell, me, tell me more about that. Draymond Green impacts winning more than Russell Westbrook. Draymond so? Green is a, gen, a generational defender. Still. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. And, and he's also a point forward. There you go. He doesn't need to shoot the ball. Russell, he doesn't need to shoot the ball at all. If you look at the games that that, that Russell Westbrook averaged a triple double for three years, he did. He's won MVP. He did. We're talking about he's today, right? In, he's been in the playoff. We're talking about today. Yeah. We're talking about the yeah. four-time champion Draymond Green. 
right? Yeah, he played with We're talking about the defensive great player of the year, of right? Time. Draymond Green, right? The greatest shooter of all time. Okay, the dream, the, the greatest shooter of all time played with the a generation defensive player and a, and one of the greatest screeners in NBA history and defensive yeah. lines. Oh, right, there a, you go. A screen is only <laughs> impactful if you have shooters. Screening for LeBron is not going to be the same as screening for Steph Curry. So he's a great screener, yes, because of the players he has on the floor with him. No. Screening for LeBron is not the same as screening for Steph Curry. Screening for LeBron might get LeBron an open layup, open dunk. Oh, I understand. You think he's a screener like that? He is. Don't you watch Draymond okay. Green play basketball? Okay. No, no, no. You, no, you, I haven't, you sure. haven't seen him in the playoffs? Okay. Go look at, go yeah. look at Steph Curry highlights. See, see who's getting him open. No, they're, they're, I mean, yeah, listen, I've watched, I've watched Golden State for a, a, a long time, my friend. I can tell you a lot of players who've gotten Steph Curry open. Um, but you, you do have a point. Draymond is uh, one of those guys. Uh, but, but like I'm telling you, it's different screening for LeBron, screening for Steph Curry. But, okay. Yeah, Austin Reeves, I think he's one of those guys. Um, honestly, guys, two, three years, I, he could be really contending for like six-man type. Type you don't status. think he, he starts? Starts on what yeah. team? On the Lakers. We're talking about the Lakers. No, not after this summer. No way. You know who LeBron James is? You think this summer's gonna be crazy? I mean, I mean, he's getting the back. You think this shit's gonna be crazy? I don't, I don't think. I don't think he's starting though. Nah. Who's he getting the back from? I think you start Elo, Beasley, Bron, Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt AD. AD, AD. Yeah. Reeves six man. I agree with Tone. I think Reeves could be six man and run the second unit. Yeah. Do I think he could get twelve point five million? Absolutely. Yeah. This climate in the NBA. Yeah, he can get. He can probably get fourteen, fifteen. Nothing. Fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he could probably get that on LeBron's team. He could probably get that. LeBron's got a lot of players paid. How you if, feel about how you feel about that D-Lo fit? Um, or how do you feel about Kyrie fit? This summer, I mean, they they have the money to to get Kyrie, and or and or I mean, or extend D'Lo. So I don't know if you. I believe I said it. I think Kyrie could fit with D'Lo. That surely, I sure, I I, oh, I don't because D'Lo's a scorer. He's a facility. He's great in the pick and roll, right? He's a great pick and roll player, D'Lo. He was even great in college. He's a great pick and roll player. However, I feel like he's with Kyrie. You need a playmaker, like a, 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 a pat. Like that's what, what why I think him and Luca will work together. Him and James Harden, I felt like that was gonna work together if they played a long time. Him and Ben Simmons, I feel like would have worked together. Ben Simmons would have been Ben Simmons from Philly. I think he needs a pass first point guard. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I, I'm 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 gonna pick D'Lo on this. I think Kyrie on the Lakers is Russell Westbrook all over again. Really? Why? Because the Russell Westbrook experience shouldn't have been like that. He's a Hall of Fame player. Okay, well, why, how does that compare to what you feel like what happened with Kyrie? Why do we think Kyrie would be a good fit in the Lakers? Shoot. It's probably it's probably <laughs> a lot of the reasons that we thought Russell Westbrook would be a good fit on the Lakers, and it didn't work. It, well, I'm I never, I never, no, I never, I never no, like that move. No, Russell Westbrook never. is a is Hold not. On. It's a awful, none of us thought that. No. Not me, not me. No, I never thought that would work. Understood. He, Understood. No. He doesn't. He do, he didn't. He didn't. He does. He didn't add to the team really. He just did him. Yeah, he doesn't really add to the team. He plays zero defense. And he turns the ball over all day. Kyrie's in an interesting spot because he's not impacting <laughs> winning in Dallas. Um, they haven't been winning, which you know makes any negotiations for him more difficult. Um, so not winning, you know, not being the the greatest player that they thought they were gonna get since he's been in Dallas doesn't make his summer look any better. I think he would be good to just sign back with Dallas. The Lakers already know what they got. They got D'Lo. They've had D'Lo there before. D'Lo is one of those guys who can also go out and get you 30. 
He can also give you 10 assists. Um, I just think he's a better overall fit versus Kyrie. Kyrie's going to require and take a lot a lot more opportunities from AD. I feel like I feel like D'Lo doesn't really do that. They kind of like in That's cuz he's amazing in the pick and roll. That's what I was saying. Like him and him yeah, and he's amazing. Yeah, him, he's amazing and, him and AD is is fire in our pick and roll. Yeah. For sure. But I also think you got to look at it like you got to go with the championship pedigree. You see what LeBron and Kyrie can do together. That's true. And instead of K Love, it'll be A D. I'm Right. Exactly. Like it's it's just it's sacrifice at that point. You yeah. know, and LeBron is the LeBron is the king of sacrificing. Like So you so you let D Lo walk? If you getting Kyrie? If I'm getting Kyrie, yeah. For the next four years? Granted, I I love the D Lo pickup. Like I'm not mad if it doesn't pickup. happen. I love it. I love it. But it's just like I've seen what damage Kyrie and LeBron can do together. Like we we've all been a witness to it. And the thing together. too, D D Lo will have a, a 30 point game and an eight point game next. Like he does he does stuff like that. Like he'll have a 30 point game and next game it'll be like eight points. Then he'll have a 25 point game. Next point next game will be like 12 points. But you rather that than a player who don't show up sometimes. Play, play sometimes. <laughs> Here we go yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and again, like, you know, he doesn't play sometimes, whatever the reasons are, you know, but can you imagine not re-signing D-Lo, you get Kyrie, and then Kyrie's <laughs> gone for half the season? Yeah. For whatever the reason may be. For whatever reason is, you know. Whatever how, reason is. How do y'all feel about AD's holding up and, 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 and carrying that team to the to the plan? Right now they eleventh. They are half game out to playing. Um, how many games they have left? About ten. They don't yeah. got enough. I'll say that. Um, the Lakers are making. They're making less and less of a case to why they need to be in the play in, not playoffs in the play in. AD not playing against the Houston Rockets. I don't. I don't understand why he would be sitting games out. I messed up your fantasy. That too, but <laughs> I don't, I don't understand why he would be sitting out. That like I agree, I agree. That's borderline y'all got, y'all got, disrespectful to the game to me. Like y'all got something to play know. for right now. Yeah, like y'all legit. Sure. It's not like y'all cruising at the top of the West. Right. Like y'all right. got, and it's not. And LeBron's out. I gotta win. Yeah. Like. Y'all in win now situations like y'all gotta win almost every game for the rest of the season. Why would the AD be sitting against the Rockets? That is a team you destroy and yeah. sit him early, right? Like so he don't gotta play. You know, keeps him in a rhythm. Yeah, and you and you get a win. He don't play and y'all drop a game to the freaking Houston Rockets. That's nasty business. If they That's miss it by like, one game, I'm firing everybody. Absolutely. I, agree. I have to. Like, I, I Everybody have gotta to. go. Everybody, Everybody. Gotta go. What do you mean, Everybody. Darby? You just got there. Who are you firing? Everybody. Nah, bro. Whose choice was it to sit him? The doctors. It wasn't Darvin Ham. I'm sure Darvin Ham wanted to play him. Darvin was like, hey, the doc this is the plan with the doctors. You're not gonna play him on back to back games, so he won't be sit- he won't be playing tomorrow night. He let the- he let them know that the game before when they won, he let them know, look, he's not playing tomorrow. Let me be devil's advocate though. Yeah, they chose not to play against the Houston Rockets because the Houston Rockets is the worst team in the NBA. I still lost. And still, but that was a decision that they make collectively. It's not just a doctor's. Hey, you'll play the front half of a back to back and not the back. Like that's a strategic. Hey, this is what we're gonna do. Because there's no way AD is saying is gonna not say I'm playing tomorrow. We need right. to be in this position, and they're right. gonna tell him no. Yeah, that's not the doctor. Not that's happening. a strategic. Not happening. Yeah, that's a strategic. Not happening. Yeah, they he, thought it was smart, but it's in the backfiring. Did in the backfiring for sure. It's terribly, because they they yeah. end up losing. Like it's embarrassing. What are you doing? I know Laker Nation thank, was. Thank I know Laker Nation was pissed. Thank goodness Reeves had thirty five <laughs> last night because 
it's, it's some of these games is just like you guys are, are winning off of like Hail Marys mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see. They, they got 10 games. I don't think, you know, my, my trust in them are is fading slowly and slowly, but um, we'll see. We will see. Eyes on Podium Podcast. We are here. We appreciate y'all. We're wrapping it up. I was here on my two brothers. Henny got fired. Um, he's not coming no back. Un- no unemployment either. No unemployment. Unemployment. You know what I'm saying? And he did say he's a Julius Randle fan now. And he said that um, LeBron told him that he was going to make the playoffs. So he still believes it. But it doesn't look like that might happen. <laughs> That's 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 tough. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Comment, like, subscribe. What you gonna say, Chris? No, no, I was just saying we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see, baby. I like y'all. Signing out. Peace.